Well, praise God for another opportunity to hear God's word and allow the Holy Spirit of God to minister and speak to us today. Um, Pastor Pat will be back with us next Sunday, but uh, for this Sunday, uh, you're stuck with me. So, well, praise the Lord. Uh, let, Let me pray before I begin this morning. Lord, I come to you today and ask you to anoint and grace me to deliver your word to your people. I pray it will bring encouragement and strength and instruction and life this day to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank God there is still a day set aside to honor mothers. And whether you are a mother that has brought children into this world or a spiritual mother raising up children, we honor you today. And if your mom has passed on to heaven, you can still honor her. I believe this. The best way to honor someone who has gone on before us is to do one thing. Do something good they did while they were on this earth. If your mom on occasion made cookies and gave them to a neighbor, make some cookies and give them to a neighbor. Maybe your mom on occasion sent a card to someone who needed encouragement. Send a card or make a phone call to encourage someone. I believe we honor someone by carrying on something they were doing. But we have to make a decision. And it's like this Proverbs woman that we're going to look at this Mother's Day. She decided to live an honorable life before God, a compassion for those in need, and love toward her family. She was not born like that. She made a decision. And we all have to make this a decision how we are going to live. Our script. Scripture reference today is found in Proverbs 31, starting with verse 10. And all the ideas set forth here will probably not be fulfilled in any one wife or mother. But each wife can seek to serve God, her family, and others with the ability and material resources that God has given her. In other words, what God has given you. Use it for good. You might say, I want to be like Jesus. He's my model. I want to have his temperament. I want to have his compassion. I want to have his patience, his character, and love. How does this happen? It first happens by making a decision. And pray. Pray like this. Lord, as I get into your presence... As I get into your word, and as your word gets into me, I'm changed in your image, your likeness, and your character. But it all starts by having a desire and making a decision. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 31, starting with verse 10. It says this, A wife of noble character, who can find? I believe this. She's made, she's transformed by the word. That's what preaching, teaching, reading God's word is all about. When you hear God's word, believe it, receive it, apply it, and speak it. It will change you. It will deliver you. It will put you on the right course. But you might say, I've been going to church and reading God's word. Yeah, but are you applying it? Are you speaking it? Are you living it? You know, just because you go to church, it doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you uh, walk into a garage, it doesn't make you a car. You know, I heard that years ago, and it stuck with me. It had a lot to do with me uh, becoming born again, um, because I was going to church, and I thought I was a Christian. But that's not what made me a Christian by going to church. It was by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. Getting back to um, the Proverbs woman here. She has a conformity to a standard of right. She wants to do what's right. Each of us that has the spirit of the living God burning in us, we should have the desire to conform to a standard of right. We want to live a righteous life. We want to be of excellent character, of moral excellence. 
But how does this happen? Romans 12, 2 says this. Don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word will transform your mind. It will change your thinking. But it will take the grace of God to live this Christian life. And any of you that um, are Christians, you know that, that it does take the grace of God. 2 Corinthians 9.8 says this. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. So that in all things, having all that you need will abound in every, in every good work. But you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision how you're going to live. And it will take the grace of God. Let's look at the second part of um, verse 10. It says, she is worth far more than rubies. And in other words, she's priceless. She's a gifted individual. She's a gift from God. It's as if a jeweler was looking at a rare precious stone and saying, it's priceless. She's something that money can't buy. Listen to me. You must see yourself as priceless, not as the world sees you. It doesn't matter what you have done wrong. Don't let the devil condemn you and put you down. Once you confess it, put it under the blood and, it's, I, and I remember this, when the Lord Jesus Christ drew his, the line in the sand, he said, it's finished, it's forgiven. The line has been drawn, and there's no condemnation to those that are, in, that are in Christ Jesus. God sees you as priceless. But the problem, problem is, people don't see themselves as priceless. And I can tell by the way they talk about themselves, the way they act. They're listening to what the world says about them instead of what the, the word of God says about them. Let the word of God be the final say. I'm going to ask you this question. How do I determine what something is worth? It's by the price that was paid for it. The word of God says that you and I have been bought with a price. What was the price that was paid for you and I. It was the blood of Jesus Christ. And there is no higher price than the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, we are priceless. Amen? She, in verse uh, 11, it says, Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She's a woman of honor. And a person of honor is only capable of showing honor. She has high esteem for her husband. She has high esteem for her family. She has high esteem for others because she knows her value. Here are some wonderful assets of this woman. She's trustworthy. She does not break the trust in her family fold. She's loyal. And trust is something you don't go to school for. Trust is, is built. It's a decision on how you're going to live. You keep your word. You do what you say you're going to do. You have to build trust. And it's by not lying to your husband, not lying to your children. A family and a marriage are built on trust. And I have advised young couples, um, a young man or a young woman before they marry, to look for trust in their spouse before they marry because trust is an important ingredient or asset that is necessary. Remember, you want to this, this be an example as this Proverbs woman is an example. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 12. Verse 12 says this, she brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. She's a continual positive help to her family all the days of her life. She is a continual positive help because she's in the word of God, speaking the positive word of God. And when there's a, a situation that arises, and you know there's going to be situations, don't speak ne negative. 
If the finances are low and a bill is due, don't go into a negative panic. And start speaking the word of God. For example, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Your children don't need to hear negative. Remember that you're an example. Speak the positive word of God. For example, because I pay tithe, I thank you, God, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings for me. You will supply all my, all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Trouble with the children at school? Speak the positive word. My children are disciples, taught of the Lord. Great is their peace and undisturbed composure. They are the head and not the tail. They are above and not beneath. No we weapon formed against them can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against them, thou shalt prove to be in the wrong. You are a positive help. Again, she speaks positive of her husband, blesses him, doesn't curse him. She speaks a word over him. She speaks positive over her children, blesses her children, doesn't curse them. Hallelujah. Because remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and she knows this. She's aggressive. Let's look at verse 13. She selects wool and flax and works with her hands. She works with her hands in delight. She enjoys it. God blesses the labor of your hands. Your motivation is your love for your family. Blessing plus work equals prosperity. See, God needs something to bless. And by you working, God blesses your hands and it equals prosperity. Prosperity comes through working with your hands. Verse 14. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She's reaching out beyond the boundaries. She goes the extra mile. She does extra things for her family. Someday ask yourself, was it worth it? And your answer will be yes, I'm setting an example for my children and for the people around me. Verse 21. It says this, when it snows, and unfortunately, it was snowing a little bit earlier here at the church. But when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. And in other words, she plans ahead, possibly listens to the weather. But most of all, she listens to the Lord. She, speaks, she seeks the Lord for wisdom for her household, because she, and she's listening after God. Verse 22, she makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. She dresses nice. That doesn't mean she goes to the fashion bug for a new dress every week. It means she's modest in appearance. She doesn't have the disco look. Her tops aren't too low and her dress isn't too short. The reason she dresses nice is for an example to her children. She dresses nice for her husband. You're not dressing nice to seek the praises of men. Just one man, your husband. She's protective. Verse 27. Let's look at that. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's protective. She watches over her children, the friends they have and what they do, the TV programs and the movies they watch. And how long does she do this? As long as they're under her roof. She's their covering. She knows that. She has the desire to make sure everything is safe and well within the family. She sets the atmosphere in the home. Praise God's peace in the home. She takes time to talk to her children, meeting her emotion, their emotional needs and their spiritual needs. Your children are going to talk to someone, best it be you. Let's look at her achievements, verse 15. 
She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She meets the needs of her household. She's not selfish. She has high esteem for others. She's giving. Verse 16, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She invests in her household. The best investment she could make is her prayer time for her family. She pours herself into her children. She plants, it mentions she plants a vineyard. She's planting loyalty, trust, truth, and God's word in her family. And she knows that she's going to reap what she sows. Verses 17 and 25. Verse 17 says, she sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. Verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She's a woman of strength. She is steadfast in the things of God. Honor is her strength. Verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She helps her husband become a success. Ladies, you can be the number one help or the number one hindrance in his life. Help him become everything God intended him to become. Success is knowing the will of God and being this in the center of it. And I like to say this. Whoever you are serving. You can either be the number one help or the number one hindrance in their life. It's my desire at an, as an associate pastor of this church to make be, be a, 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 the number one help to my pastor. And that's my desire. I want to see her successful. I want to see this church successful. I want to see the people grow. I want to be the number one blessing for uh, this church and my pastor. I want to say this. You don't have to listen too keenly to be aware that there is within our own society a move to somehow take motherhood, the joy of a family, the joy of raising children and make it second class. There are those in our society that would like to make mothers a second class citizen. They ask questions like, why would a mother take time to pour herself into the lives of her children when there are career opportunities and all types of things that she could be doing that would seem more profitable. But what does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your children? <clears throat> but it is profitable to have a vision for your children's lives. Who said mothers are a second class citizen? Not God. Don't allow the world's environment to make you into their image. Hallelujah. Whew. There's anointing on that. Someone took the time to mentor this Proverbs woman. I was mentored. It made a big difference in my life. It made me who I am today. Someone took the time to sit down with me and go through scriptures one on one and made sure I was rooted in the word of God. It made me who I am today. Mentoring is one who sets an example by imparting wisdom, living in integrity and in character. I believe in mentoring. I have mentored. I am mentoring. I believe it's important. Teaching, in other words, for this Proverbs woman, woman, it's like it's teaching the younger woman, as the scripture says, how to handle themselves. Teaching the younger woman as they grow, how to speak, what to listen to as Christians. First Timothy 2.9, it talks about how to dress, and it says modest in appearance. 
You don't need to attract a man with sex appeal. Attract them with clean hands and a pure heart. That's what you should be looking for. The word of God says in Romans, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Holy mothers rep reproduce holy children. And we need a holy generation. If your children are in a situation or relationship they shouldn't be in, pray. There is no stronger prayer than a mother's prayer. It comes from the, in, it comes from the inside out. Did you ever hear a mother pray for her children? I have. I've heard my wife pray for her children. There's not a stronger prayer on this earth than a prayer from a mother. Moms, never, never give up on your children. Stick with them. Never give up praying for them. God will honor your prayers. The word of God says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Second Chronicles 16.9 says this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and forth throughout the whole earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. The best word I could give moms and wives this day is stay committed to the Lord. He will give you strength. He will give you strength in your marriage and your family. You know, the devil has an attack on commitment. He wants you to give up your commitment to God, to your husband, to your children, and to your pastor. Because commitment holds you together. What holds you together? Commitment. It's not only love or feelings, because sometimes you get into a disagreement or argument and you don't feel too lovey-dovey anymore. If you're depending on feelings, feelings come and go. But it's a commitment. It's a decision to, to stay committed that holds you together. The bottom line is, stay committed to the Lord, to your husband, to your children, to your pastors. Be everything God wants you to be. Live a life of honor. In conclusion, you must desire to have moral excellence. You must eat the word, meditate on it, and allow it to become part of your life. It will change you. Know that you have been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ, and know that you are priceless. Desire to be a positive help, speaking the word of God. Be a blessing to someone else. Make the word of God the final authority in your life. Work with your hands in delight. God will bless the work of your hands. Pattern your life after Jesus. And then pour yourself into someone else. And last but not least, stay committed to your God, your marriage, your family, your church, your pastor. Be everything God wants you to be by his grace. And I pray this message blessed, blesses you today and all who hear it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And please stay tuned for a short video. Well, moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us, your perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>